Hello people, how are you? Um, I have been reading a book about the self-image and I thought it might be useful for you if I read a little bit because the teachings by this fantastic plastic surgeon who is long gone now, um, Dr. Maxwell Maltz, it's called Psychosabinetics, are very relevant and they were very, very similar to the teachings by Neville Goddard on the concept of self and achieving your dreams. <coughs> Sorry, as usual, my throat is going dry. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I haven't posted any clips for a while, but if I leave it for a bit, then I just, um, I don't do it. I, I have all these ideas and um, I've been so tired recently that I've just thought, oh, wait a bit, because it takes time to do this, even though this is just really horrible. So anyway, I'll get on with it. Um, before I start, I feel that a lot of what Neville Goddard spoke about was um, in two streams of thought, I suppose. The, the concept of self, changing the concept of self and visualising for your, for your dreams. Everything coming from the imagination, of course. And um, a lot of the time I forget that I'm meant to think from the new concept of self. It's very easy, or sometimes it's easy, to visualise what you want to happen in your world. To visualise a scene that implies your desire is realised. And you just feel happy and you believe it's done, all the good things. But sometimes I think we forget that we are to think from the new concept of self. In other words, what would we be like if we achieved our dream? How would we change? Because we're thinking from that. We've got to imagine we've already achieved our dream. We've done it now. Um, and, and we're the person that we are going to actually become in the physical world. We've got to actually think from that person, that new person. Um, and I forget sometimes. Anyway, this book is about the self-image and it's about goals and dreams. So it's not about changing your concept of self all the time. It's um, about becoming a more successful, happier person and realising that you are a child of God, I suppose. And so you, you need to really love yourself and treat yourself with respect. And we know that, but we don't always do it. Um, and it's just, it's very helpful to me to read a different, to come across a different angle on, on really the same teachings. Because he talks a lot about the imagination and using the imagination. To achieve your dreams. So this I would say is more self-image, improving your self-image and goals um, as opposed to changing your concept of yourself on a regular basis. So I will read from chapter two which is about the imagination and this is called get a new mental picture of yourself. So I hope you find this helpful. The unhappy failure type personality cannot develop a new self-image by pure willpower or by arbitrarily deciding to. There must be some grounds, some justification, some reason for deciding that the old picture of the self is in error and that a new picture is appropriate. You cannot merely imagine a new self-image unless you feel that it is based on truth. Experience has shown that when a person does change his self-image, he has the feeling that for one reason or another, he sees or realises the truth about himself. The truth in this chapter can set you free of an old, 
inadequate self-image, if you read it often, think intently about the implications and hammer home its truth to yourself. So again, you've got to do this on a regular basis. You can't just be, I don't know, it's like Neville Goddard teachings, I will watch um, a clip and be totally inspired and then um, go to work and forget. So you've got to hammer it home, like they say. It's, it's regular practice and regular reading or listening. So there's no easy way, you just gotta keep doing it. But luckily for us, it's a real joy and um, makes us feel good, so it's all good. <clears throat> Science has now confirmed what philosophers, mystics, and other intuitive people have long declared. Every human being has been literally engineered for success by his creator. I love that, we are made to be successful and we shouldn't believe anything other than that. I mean, you know, maybe some people don't like me saying, using the word God, but by God, I mean imagination. Everything comes from the imagination, everything comes from God. And it's a living pulsating whole and God would not um, create us to be failures. There's nothing that makes less sense to me than that. Why would he do that? It, it's, yeah, we, we're all, we all have our purpose, don't we? And we're all here to be a success and we can do it. We've just got to believe in ourselves and um, use the imagination to believe in ourselves. Okay, so he says, every human being has, has access to a power greater than himself this means you, every human being. As Emerson said, there are no great and no small. If you are engineered for success and happiness, then the old picture of yourself as unworthy of happiness, a person who was meant to fail, must be an error. Yeah, it's just... It's just how you perceive yourself, that's all. And you can perceive yourself to be a success as well. Oh, the next bit says, read this chapter through three times a week for 21 days. So you have to buy the book, basically. And he's, he thinks 21 days because um, he noticed that when he operated on people, it took them an average of 21 days to get used to the new, um, the new look, I suppose the new identity. So that's not very long though, is it? That's quite optimistic that we can change, but that's what he's seen, so I believe him. Memorize the following basic principles by which your success mechanism operates. Um, success mechanism, I'll just find his definition of it. It's a guidance, guidance system. Um, here we go. Every living, every living thing has a built-in guidance system or goal striving device put there by the creator to help it achieve its goal, which is in broad terms to live. And he doesn't just mean um, to breathe and survive. He, he means in an expansive way. We want more life. And, and that means growing and developing as a person and achieving our, our purpose in life, our dreams. So that's our purpose, to live and to live fully. Where was I up to now? You do not need to be an electronic engineer. Good, because I am definitely not that or a physicist to operate your own servo mechanism any more than you have to be able to engineer an automobile in order to drive one or become an electrical engineer in order to turn on the light in your room. You do need to be familiar with the following concepts, however, because when you have memorized them, they will throw new light 
on what is to follow. Number one, your built-in success mechanism must have a goal or target. This goal or target must be conceived of as already in existence now. Either in actual or potential form. It operates by either one, steering you to a goal already in existence or two, discovering something already in existence. And as the Bible says, everything already exists, everything's already been created and it, it, it all um, exists in the invisible. And Neville Goddard is always saying that in his talks. So all we have to do to draw it out of the invisible is to have faith that it is there, to believe in it. And that brings it to us. It's very mysterious, but that's the way it works. And so he's saying virtually the same thing here. He is saying the same thing. That everything is in existence now. And you've got to believe that. You've got to believe it, that's all. So that's your faith, that's the faith part of it, believing it is there. And just keep, hold the faith, you can do it. Number two, the automatic mechanism is teleological. That is, it operates or must be oriented to end results goals. And also Neville Goddard is always speaking about living in the end living in the feeling of what it would be like if your dream was fulfilled. So we've got to focus on the end result, not the process so much. The process is going to come, but we've got to believe that we are already at the end, before we are in the material world anyway. Do not be discouraged because the means whereby may not be apparent. It is the function of the automatic mechanism to supply the means whereby when you supply the goal. So we live in the end and God sorts out the rest. He knows the how. We don't need to think of how we're going to achieve our dream. We've just got to believe we've already achieved it and just live in that feeling and not worry so much about how it's going to happen because things will come to us and we will have to take action, obviously. But the feeling brings the, the physical experience. So we start with the feeling. Where was I up to now? Okay. Think in terms of the end result and the means whereby will often take care of themselves. I would just change that to always. The means by which your success mechanism works often take care of themselves and do so effortlessly when you supply the goal to your brain. The precise action steps will come to you without stress, tension or worry about how you are going to accomplish the result you seek. Many people make the mistake of interfering with their success mechanism by demanding a, it's getting really dark, so I'm going to have to use my glasses, sorry, I'm not struggling anymore. Oh my god, that's so much better. Should have done that ages ago. Okay, back to, where was I up to? The precise action steps will come to you without stress, tension or worry about how you're going to accomplish the result you seek. Many people make the mistake of interfering with their success mechanism by demanding a how before a goal is clearly established. After you've formed a mental image of the goal you seek to create, the how will come to you, not before. Remain calm and relaxed and the answers will arrive. Any attempt to force the ideas to come will not work. As Brian Tracy wrote, in all mental workings, effort defeats itself. 
So don't worry about the how. Just focus on living in the end. That's all it's saying. The only thing is, when I wear my glasses, the green light of my computer always reflects in them and I can't bear. Just go like that. That's annoying. Number three. This is a good one. This seems to be written for me in my mind. Do not be afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes are normal. It's okay to make mistakes. And I sometimes get really frustrated with myself when I make mistakes, but it's okay. Or do not be afraid of temporary failures. It doesn't mean the whole thing is going to just go downhill. It's just something you've got to go through for some reason that you, you don't know yet. All servo mechanisms achieve a goal by negative feedback or by going forward, making mistakes and immediately correcting course. It's like a torpedo. It's just a this way, this way, this way, until it reaches the target. So you will make mistakes on the way. Number four, skill learning of any kind is accomplished by trial and error mentally correcting aim after an error until a successful motion, movement or performance has been achieved. After that, further learning and continued success is accomplished by forgetting the past errors and remembering the successful response so that it can be imitated. So that's really interesting too because um, we remember our successes, but we, we, we need to drop our failures, our memories of failures. But some people don't drop it, do they? So if you, if you keep carrying around your failures, you're going to see yourself as a failure. So you need to drop that. Learn from it, drop it, and remember your successes. And then you're going to see yourself as a successful person. Last one, number five, you must learn to trust your creative mechanism to do its work and not jam it by becoming too concerned or too anxious as to whether it will work or not, or by attempting to force it by too much conscious effort. You must let it work rather than make it work. That gives me a feeling of very relaxed and going with the flow. This trust is necessary because your creative mechanism operates below the level of consciousness and you cannot know what is going on beneath the surface. That's all about the how as well that Neville Goddard speaks about and trusting the creator. And um, sometimes things will appear in objective reality in, in the material world and we will start to lose faith and think it's never going to happen. But as long as we live in the end, live in the feeling, it will happen. It will. It's all about faith. And that's just how we've been built. To trust. To trust in our creator. That it will be done. And then the more we trust... And the more we see positive results, um, the greater our faith until it becomes effortless. That's what I believe anyway. I'm not there yet, but I will be there one day. I trust it. And um, I'm sure many people watching are there. Or they are having a lot of success. I suppose like, we always need a bit of help because we're human beings, but we, we do get better and better at this. Where was I to? Yeah. Moreover, its nature is to operate spontaneously according to present need. And that's interesting as well, isn't it? So it's changing according to the need. Therefore, you have no guarantees in advance. It comes into operation as you act and as you place a demand on it by your actions. You must not wait to act until you have proof. You must act as if it is there and it will come through. Do the thing and you will have the power, said Emerson. 
action is very important and faith. Okay, so um, as usual, my computer has gone off, sorry. But, so I just get it back on again. Okay, look. Um, so what do you think about that? Do you think that's helpful? Are you going to buy the book? It, it, this book, um, <clears throat> I've never heard of it before. Um, it's quite famous in America, I believe. But um, it, it's the granddaddy of self-help books, apparently. And I'm so, so glad I read it. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm on my second reading now because I liked it so much. <coughs> Frog in my throat. Um, I have a variety of um, liquids to help in my throat. This is because when I always start off and I do my recording, um, I really mess up in some way or other. Um, when I've done one, I can usually do the second one straight through, even though I always make mistakes, but I just don't care anymore. But this one, because I haven't done it for ages, I've, I've been talking for a while and I've started to lose my voice, so that's why. And I don't think this is a very good recording at all, but at least I have read it out for you. And hopefully um, you will read this book because I think it's very, very useful. It's got um, key points to remember at the end of every chapter, um, which I used when I wrote my book, Plug Plug, Imagining Creates Reality. Because I just, I just think, well, we all forget. So if you can just look at what that chapter was about, hopefully it brings things to mind. And this is even better because it's personalized. You decide what was important to you and you write it down and write things about your own experiences that relate to the chapter. So it's really a workbook. I like it. So I'm going to change my self image and it's all about using, um, using the positive things that happened in your past, focusing on positive memories. And so it is based on the truth. It is the truth. Because as, as he said, when I was reading this, you change your self image when you're, you're realizing that your present self image is an error. And it, se it seems to me that it's not so much an error. It is an error. It is an error. But we're, we're focusing on maybe negative things that have happened to us and our failures in life. And we're making that our reality, how we see ourselves. And then we lack confidence because we think, oh, I did this and I did that and nothing's ever going to turn out right for me. But just as we've all had failures, we've all had successes as well. And even the small things should be noted. And he encourages you to focus on your successes and use the good feeling that you get from that to imagine your future. And, and that's the truth. It's not making something up. It's, it's, it's the truth of your life. So I believe it, it will work. And I haven't really started doing the exercises yet, but um, when I read it through the first time, I remember every day I was thinking, I'm going to focus on the positive today and I did and I did feel a lot better and I thought I was doing that before but clearly I wasn't so it's just about um, um, bringing, bringing up those good memories again and feeling, feeling good about your life and then creating manifesting from, from then on so what do you think about that? Does that sound reasonable? Are you going to try it? Maybe um, people who can't be bothered to read the book could just uh, write down, say, five um, good memories, successful memories, and dwell on them every day and get that good feeling and then um, visualize from that. I'm sure that would help a lot. And um, 
give you that concept of being very successful. So, um, yeah, oh God, I didn't realise I'd gone on so long. So if you're still watching, well done as usual. Um, at the moment I am going through something not bad, um, something that just has to be done. And that's the most I can say about it really. And I don't want to make this clip even longer but um, somebody else has gone through something similar and I've been in touch with that person and the difference between us is that she does not have great faith that she's going to have a good end result to her story and I have great faith that I will and I know I already have a great ending <laughs> and um, I'm trying to help her but if people don't believe, you can't do much. And um, she's not familiar with Neville Goddard's teachings, but I told her about, um, just imagine um, that you already have what you want. That's the, the essence of it. You've got to imagine you've already got it and be happy and believe. And um, not much of a reaction from that. But the worst thing was, um, she started putting doubt into my own mind. But I was quite aware of what was going on. And I, I reaffirmed my faith. There was a moment when um, some, I felt something in my stomach, like nervous because some, of something she said that, that could be true. And, uh, but then I, I gathered myself very quickly and I realized that's not going to help me at all thinking like that. And it's just not true. I know it isn't. And then I was back to 100% faith again. And she did it again today. Um, and I said, no, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great. I know it. And, um, and then she was like, good luck then. And I wrote back, um, you don't need luck when you've got faith. I thought she'd be irritated by that, but she got it and she was happy, so. Um, so keep the faith, whatever you're imagining for, don't let anyone talk you out of it. And actually don't tell people if they are going to um, not help you by suggest suggesting otherwise. That's my advice. I've learned that through trial and error. And um, yeah, I think it's better not to share things most of the time. Anyway, I've gone on for a while as usual, but nice to record again, and the next one will be a lot better, I promise you. So take care of yourselves, people, and um, thanks for watching. Please give me a like if you like that. Bye.